kicked off on his way. I must stop you there. There's something terribly wrong. <laughs> My pen doesn't work. Just as I get hopeful we're going to have a decent show, <laughs> and he's back. It was, it was my body double. <laughs> Before you asked, that 100 at Sydney in 91, that was her. <laughs> and that North at Melbourne, that was me. <laughs> With David and Jonathan is England's top run scorer of the past decade, who's decided not to go to India this autumn and to spend Christmas at home for the first time in 20 years. Although, as a creature of habit, on Boxing Day he's going to put on his pads and sit in the toilet for six hours. <laughs> Alex Stewart. <laughs> Rory is the lippy new presenter of Mastermind. They've already done a pilot in which one contestant was lucky enough to get through to a second question. <laughs> Bob Anderson. <laughs> we get things underway with Sporting Bluff. Gary, Rory and Clive. Here's Nick, Chelsea. Nick, Nick, I yeah. must, I'm sorry, interrupt you just one second here. And I'd like to address the nation and apologise, if I may, for the commotion they might have heard earlier on the show. I don't know if you heard it here, but uh, it's a, a dark day here at the BBC. They're filming Question of Sport next door. And apparently Sue just asked Ali if he wanted to play at home or away. And, and it's all gone off terribly. <laughs> it, it's gone off terribly next door. <laughs> so, in case you were wondering what the noise was. Gary, Rory and Clive. <laughs> Here's Chelsea's Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank scoring a penalty against the arse, followed by the reaction of his gleeful manager. And uh, right on the money here is Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. 1-1. One, one. I think I have a good player, but uh, uh, like team, uh, we, we are child. And then game after game, the child will be man. I hope. <laughs> Your English is fantastic. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> So that was Chelsea manager Claudio Ranieri conducting his first ever interview in English. We want to know what method he used to learn the language. David's team. Mr Ranieri, well, he learned his English by watching EastEnders. Claudio Ranieri learned English from Chelsea fans. Claudio Ranieri learned English... <laughs> <laughs> Claudio Ranieri learned... <laughs> You say Gianluca Viale, you'd be all right. <laughs> that bloke learned English by going to see West End musicals. But Jonathan, isn't your mother an extra in East? She quite regularly appears in the bar she, at the Queen's Bench. She's regularly in the background of the bar. She's sometimes to be found in the laundrette, occasionally in the marketplace. She'll be wherever they tell you can her to go I sometimes hear snippets of her conversation saying things like, I know we're really ashamed of him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, you know, he dresses like a puff. He's not even colour blind, you know. <laughs> you leave my brother Paul out of this. <laughs> Well, we don't think it's that one, though. We're not... No, we're not well, hang on. Why, why, yeah. would he, why would he want to learn English anyway? Is it Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't have said that last season, would he, when he was working in football? <laughs> <laughs> what did they shout at you, Gary? When you were a footballer, what sort of things did fans shout at you? They didn't have to shout. Gary would have heard it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Ranieri's English hasn't improved that much because he still thinks Graham Rich is a paediatrician. <laughs> I think it's definitely a musical one because uh, yeah. he did say Mamma Mia after Chelsea failed to beat <laughs> Fulham. So you think that Jonathan was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, Jonathan Spake, the truth, Claudio Ranieri has indeed learned English through regular visits to such shows as Les Miserables, Notre Dame de Paris and Mamma Mia. <laughs> According to the players, Ranieri's favourite English phrase is, come on, let's go. So he's been to see some Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals then. <laughs> His English isn't that good, though. He still thinks that a vote of confidence from the chairman means he's been given a vote of confidence from the chairman. <laughs> David, Jonathan and Alec. It's Alec's predecessor as England wicketkeeper for you, Gloucestershire's Jack Russell. That's it. Beautifully taken by Jack Russell. Now, as Alec here will testify, Jack Russell is a slave to his routine. What have you got to say, Gary's team? Well, Jack Russell soaks his Weetabix in milk for precisely 12 minutes every day. Jack Russell refuses to tell his teammates where he lives and circles roundabouts three times to fool imaginary pursuers. <laughs> Jack Russell insists that all workmen at his house are blindfolded. <laughs> are those blindfolded builders, the same people who dressed Jonathan again today. <laughs> <laughs> F off, Gower. <laughs> Alec, it's lovely to have you on the show. Isn't it lovely to have Alec on the show? Yeah, it is yeah. lovely. Yeah. Welcome, Alec. Thank you. Yeah. Lovely to be here. Alec, is it true that in your, <laughs> your cricket career that you, uh, you've lost more tests than anyone else? I'd like to think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you see, David, you're not even the best at being rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but you know Jack Russell, don't you? Jack is a great bloke. And he's a superstitious fella. He's exceptionally <laughs> superstitious. Are, are you, are you superstitious? Do you have little rituals and things? I have a few habits. Yeah, because they're not working, are they? <laughs> <laughs> what was it first? Weedabix, wasn't it? I've been 12th man for Jack, and uh, it has to be 12 minutes. He so? knows if it's 11 minutes 59, he throws it back well, in. It's part of your 12th man's duties to soak his Weetabix yep. in milk. Lunch is at 1 o'clock. And he has Weetabix for lunch. He has Weetabix. What does he have for breakfast? With room temperature milk. You have to stir the milk in with your right hand. <laughs> if you don't... <laughs> what you do with your left hand? <laughs> that goes on No top. scope for practical <laughs> jokes there, then. <laughs> <laughs> but there's other cereals as well, of course. Cornflakes are my personal favourites. <laughs> oh, and Gary, I believe in the morning, he gives his kids a lot of choice. Because you know you can get those packs with all the different flavours in, like the multi-packs. Yeah. Salt and vinegar, cheese and onion... <laughs> <laughs> They're the only children in the country who beg for vegetables as a treat. <laughs> no more crisps! Please! You jughead dad! <laughs> you mock this superstition. I mean, you've never been a sportsman. You don't understand the superstitions yeah, that sportsmen right. have. Do they all really have one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Alan McCoyst, every morning at 8 o'clock, down a drain pipe. <laughs> You can't talk about Patsy Kenzie like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> Yo, you've, got, you've got nasty, you've got a dark side of you. I've never met her. Well, if you did, she'd probably <laughs> her, so there you go. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> Even Clive. I've been in a film with her. Have you? Yes. Well, what, if, what if Dwight York's presumably? <laughs> <you? laughs> Tougher superstition. Every morning he comes home. <laughs> <laughs> David Beckham, 8 o'clock in the morning, he's still reading that goodnight story to, uh, to Brooklyn. Boss <laughs> well, mimes in the shower. What, well, you mean yeah. she doesn't yeah. really wash? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, uh, there's not much to wash, is that's there? That's true. <laughs> well, there was a roundabout Roundabouts, question. roundabouts, yeah. Go around about three times. Does he live in Stoke and doesn't want anyone to know? <laughs> oh. <laughs> David, here you have here you have a beautiful town that produced top pop star Robbie Williams, Williams, Anthea Turner, comedian Nick Hancock, who, who must be a relative of yours, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small town, and it's been called the worst place to live in Britain. Apparently, there are millions of Stokies leaving right now, oh. looking for a better home and better living conditions in Afghanistan. <laughs> Was it not true that the captain of the Titanic came from Stoke? Mm. It's got to be bad if you'd rather crash the f ship than go on. <laughs> it? Jonathan, now you've said all that, I'd like to, to, to invite you to come up to Stoke on Trent yeah. and visit one or two of the pubs that I go to. And <laughs> you... <laughs> You'd be most welcome. No need to dress any differently. Come in! <laughs> 
be your flamboyant best. Nick. Put your views on the table. Mm. People love a healthy debate up there. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, afterwards, you'll find out why our hospitals are so shit. <laughs> Nick, I'm on the next train with you. All right. <laughs> Still on round one, by the all way. Right. <laughs> I have a theory about this one. Go on. It's all three. He reckons it's all three. Let's see if you're right. <laughs> to be fair, Jack has asked us to point out that he does value his privacy, which is why he never tells anyone that he lives at number 12, Parkside, Cheltenham, GL50, 5AP, <laughs> telephone 01242 690 <laughs> Jack made history when, as England wicketkeeper, he was also commissioned to paint the World Cup final. He replied, but what if we... No, no, that'll be fine. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. What's going on now is what's going on. Gary's team, take a look at this. OK, so what was that all about? That's, that's, the, that's the Taliban, you know, parading their military might. <laughs> <laughs> It's Lord Murray, isn't it? That's what it, it is. It looks like Lord Murray. Murray. Murray, Murray Walker. Murray Walker's retirement. He's now just doing some gardening, but he's organising his neighbours into a little bit of a <laughs> <laughs> tournament. <laughs> Clive, congratulations yes. on the Mastermind job, because Clive is hosting Mastermind, which, when I was growing up, it was one of the best shows on TV. Do you remember Mastermind? <laughs> well, you haven't got much of an audience, Clive, but I'm sure you'll win them over. <laughs> I used to love it, and I would yes. love... I wonder whether I can unveil myself upon you and ask you whether I could just sneak an appearance on the show. How are you on general knowledge? You okay? I'm not very good on general knowledge, but I found that I don't need it. I find that just masturbation jokes have got me through life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing fine on them. Come, come now, Jonathan. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, it's lawnmowers. There's people yeah. driving around on lawnmowers. Uh, how, how complicated does this show get? <laughs> Rory's girlfriend does his lawn. He leaves her out at night to graze. <laughs> The Grand Prix. Grand Thank Prix. you very much. That's it's what a grass need. Grand Prix. Yes. Oh, it's Yes, those were the highlights of the British Grand Prix of lawnmower racing held this year in West Sussex. The race you saw was from the Group 2 event championship, won this year by Bob Wilson. No, not that one. <laughs> Which is, of course, for roller-driven mowers with seats at the rear. Next year's race is a toughie. Entrants are being asked to mow Pete Sampras's back. <laughs> David's team, this one's for you. He doesn't say a lot. He doesn't actually do very much. And yet, and yet, he has only to change his hairstyle and the next day, the entire country is talking about it. I tell you what's going on there, some of the worst overacting I've seen in my life. <laughs> It's got to be a sort of David Beckham studies or a sort of media studies thing. Because or... footballers could do it going back to school, couldn't they, I would have thought. I mean, imagine if Dwight York was at school. Excuse me, he'd come, he'd come in and say, I'm sorry, sir, the dog ate it. And they go, yeah, I know, we've seen you out with Jordan, but where's your homework? <laughs> <laughs> come on, you've all thought it when you've seen pictures of her. What the f*** has she done to herself, <laughs> <laughs> What's that all about? You're saying she's one of these celebrities who makes us up, made herself look ridiculous. She's made herself look ridiculous yeah. just to get attention. <laughs> How? <laughs> How could that happen? <laughs> What's she thinking? <laughs> That's a baby thing. Of course, yeah. it's got to be. It's not yeah. just I'll, as easy as the bloody law. I'll give you three points. Yeah. You're close enough. <laughs> that was part of the football culture course at Staffordshire University, where students analysed David Beckham's cultural impact on English society. Well, it was actually a reconstruction. When we asked to film a few minutes of the course, its professor, Ellis Cashmore, demanded £500 in used notes. So, we decided to film our own version and keep the money for ourselves. <laughs> Victoria Beckham's new autobiography contains the startling revelation that David once considered suicide. Luckily, his chosen method was to be shot by Andy Cole. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. <laughs> It's the much vaunted return of our goal celebrations round. We want to know what stories lie behind a pair of celebrations. Gary's team, it's yet another flimsy excuse to see England's fifth and final goal against Germany scored by Emil Heskey. 
Scholes again now. Heskey's to his left unmarked. Emil Heskey, could it be five? Yes, it is! Germany won, England five. I think the problem is that uh, uh, BBC haven't got the football rights anymore, so they have to pretend it's a golf game, which they have got. <laughs> so every time celebrate, they have to mime another sport. We've got yeah. England, Greece tomorrow. It doesn't Kick. clash with Mastermind on the Discovery Channel, does it, by any chance? Is that what you're on? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a question everybody's asking. Does England, Greece clash with Mastermind on the Discovery Channel? <laughs> well, oh, I'm going to have to miss so. a game yeah. now! <laughs> Why aren't you on the BBC? I don't know. The BBC's flogged it to the Discovery Channel. Well, I suppose yeah. if it's on the BBC, they've got a decent presenter, I suppose. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I've been savaged by Gary Lineker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's too cruel for words. <laughs> I can't recover right. from that. <laughs> um, I, think I, I think I read somewhere that uh, he was doing a charity um, golf match, pro am sort of golf match with right. Nick Faldo, and he beat Nick Faldo on one. And one hold, and then who's going to do that as a celebration? That's exactly what it says here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Esky's father named his children according to what he was watching on TV at the time. Emil's middle name is Ivanhoe, and his brothers are called Rivellino and Santana. But it was bad news for their other brother, state funeral of Anwar Sadat. <laughs> There's so many options. I know, I know. <laughs> but that's the right that's one. An unpredictable one. <laughs> now, I should say um, mm. that you did indeed mm. say exactly what it said on the card there, Rory, because that wasn't the correct answer. That was something that we made up. And the only way that you <laughs> could have known it... <laughs> oh, wow. ..was if you'd seen these cards. Yes. Now, this leads me to believe that also, in the last two weeks, you knew about Hingis and Kornikova playing in a charity match in Chile, <laughs> and you knew about Renault's, Renault's technical director, Jean-Jacques Heath, and the East German Stasi. <laughs> and we're starting to think... <laughs> OK, possibly I we've What's wrong with to... initiative? So I steal the scripts for the show beforehand. Well, oh, I'm you afraid... can't teach initiative anymore. That means, that means we're going to have to take off these three points, so you're back down to six, take off the three points from last week and the week before, which means... <laughs> Which means that Gary's team loses both of those shows. Well, I'm afraid the actual answer was it was a tribute to his hero, Tiger Woods, so there you go. And the fact that you lose all those points means that now the series stands at David and Jonathan 3, Mr Cheaty and Mr Beardy Cheaty <laughs> 1. <laughs> People bet on this. <laughs> I do. That's why Alex here, then. Alex! <laughs> <laughs> People bet on this. <laughs> <laughs> David's team, it's your go. You'll remember the American Soccer League's All-Star game where the West came up against the East in a rip-roaring six-all draw. That was Landon Donovan with the net buster. But why the bra under the football shirt? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Has he been to one of Gary's infamous parties? <laughs> I was uh, uh, there the one last week. He tricked me into it. He said, come on over, we can have spit roast. I thought he was talking about food. It turned out it was a new position he wanted to try. <laughs> I didn't mind so much. I'm used to that kind of thing. But some of the older folks there were very upset. <laughs> Mr and Mrs Motson were visibly shaken. <laughs> I'm only guessing now, but yeah, genuinely, it's there the was a the football America, match. No, I saw it on the news. America something. versus China. No, it was ladies oh, football, yeah, yeah. and one of the ladies footballers was promoting bras for someone, sports bras. Yeah. And she whipped off the top and showed the sports bra. Mm. And I bet you that's what that young fella's doing. That's virtually correct. I'll test, give you three points, testing. yeah. It was a tribute to a previous goal celebration by Brandy Chastain in the Women's World Cup final, who famously stripped to her bra when she scored the winning penalty against China. Brandy's bra was the Nike Inner, inner Actives encapsulated racer brack sport to do this again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you know, I was perfect in, in, yeah. in, in several years ago. <laughs> Brandy's bra was the Nike Inner Actives encapsulated racer back sports bra with thermo mesh and integral underwiring. That wasn't Doesn't... perfect. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's my birthday today as well. Is it? Yeah. Happy birthday, you fat tosser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's
cheered me up no end. <laughs> Take points off me. <laughs> Randy's bra was the Nike Inner Actives encapsulated racer back sports bra with thermo mesh and integral underwiring. Doesn't matter how clever it is, Rory could still get it off with his tongue. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and David's team have nine. Come on. Come on. Time for our regulars to flounce about in blindfolds as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Jonathan, you're up first this Come week. Come on, Captain. You'd like to take your positions? I'm confident your today. blindfolds on. <laughs> All from the pound shop. <laughs> you were dumb. <laughs> okay, can we have our mystery guest, please? Game is this then? <laughs> Nick, is it the richest man in Stoke showing off his Ferrari? <laughs> I'm so glad you chose that car. Okay. I know this is one of those cars you get outside like your local okay. Waitrose and you put 20p in and your kids have a little ride. I'm from Stoke, what's Waitrose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a glittering palace. <laughs> I'm looking for a small vehicle. Well, for your small talent. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, watch out, David, he's angry. Oh. <laughs> he's angry. Yeah. Oh. That must be that lawnmower thing, is it? What's his name? Oh, um, oh it's the sportsman's name. Same name as the It's, commentator. um, yeah, Bob Wilson. Is the correct right. answer? <laughs> yeah, look at that. Brilliant. I like the look of that. <laughs> it's the Bob Wilson who will be competing in the Lawn Mower Grand Prix at Wisber Green, West Sussex, this weekend. The only one that's not Bob Wilson. It is that Bob Wilson. Bob Wilson. <laughs> Gary and Rory, if you could take your positions, please. That's me and you, Gary. Yep, off you go. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh. Blindfold, John. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, you know what's much. interesting is when uh, Gary's got the blindfold on, there's a lot of people at home who, who don't know him from sport, but they recognise him from Contacts magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Second mystery guest, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and your time starts now. Oh. oh. Oh, hello. It's a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mascot. Oh, what's that? How many people have we got chair. here? Oh, there's another one. Another dummy. I got... <coughs> dummy? Well, it's, this is the real person and two well, dummies. It's a real one. Is it Parkinson and Posh and Bex? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the, anyone else? Oh, blonde, what's, what's this? This is somebody in... Somebody's got a mask. It's, a, it's Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> So we've got one, one live person to... Is it the Lib Dem conference? Oh. Have you got... Oh. <laughs> He's out his toe! Oh, no! This is toe! <laughs> this is the real one. Oh, oh dear. Oh, where are we fit for next week? Hey, are these goalkeeper's hands or what? Yeah. Is it a panel? What is it, that? It's got to be... Yeah. Bob Wilson. Bob Wilson. Couldn't you afford all three? No. <laughs> <laughs> Ali was busy. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have 12 points and Gary's team have nine. Yeah. 
Exactly. We finish no. things off by playing the name game. The leaders goes first, which is uh, David's team. Pass those along to Jonathan, please. I'm confident please. today that we can... As many names as you can oh. in 90 seconds. Starting oh, now. OK, uh, we've met him earlier. He's a sports commentator from ITV. Bob Wilson. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, and he's a bloke with a very yes. similar name who wastes oh, lawnmowers. Would it be Bob Wilson? Bob Wilson. <laughs> I think we're going to win this meet. <laughs> oh, it's not Bob is Wilson. It, is it Bob Wilson? All right, no. It's the name of a little dog, but it's also Pink a completely tonto. There you go. Thank you. All right. OK, this, the second name of this lady golfer is there are seven of these and they're all deadly, my friend. Sin. OK, and the first name is you would give a lady a necklace on a special occasion. <laughs> <laughs> We had a chance till then. Come on, you know what it is. <laughs> what kind of necklace would you give a lady, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, when, we, you know. Well, I don't personally start with diamonds. No, yeah, so well, <laughs> that would bloody hurt coming out, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You live in the real world. Um, oh, so, that's it, thank you. Yeah. All right, this bloke, uh, we know that him and Gary have a bit of a thing uh, going on. Mark Lawrence. Lawrenson, also known as the Leather Man, I believe. <laughs> okay. uh, this one, uh, his name in Spanish is Miguel. Uh, Miguel? No, but it's English, I want. But I just tell you what it is. I'm Michael something. That's it, Michael. All right. Second name is, if you're doing the same thing in life every day, and you're stuck in Boring. a... You're stuck in Boring. a... Rut. Rut, and then rutter. Rutting like... OK. All right. <laughs> All right, and now... Ah! Oh. Well done. I hope Nick will disallow us at least one of those. I think so. I'm going to dock you one for the rotter, I'm afraid. You stoke c <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I'm proud of it. OK. <laughs> Quite right, Andy. You're and proud. your time starts now. <laughs> the English-speaking Chelsea manager. Claudio Ranieri. Uh, this is a um, cheeky Scottish love rat. <laughs> Alan McCoy. Very good. Now, <laughs> this is, of course, the guy who refereed the 1878 FA Cup final. Hugh Dallas. It, first, first, <laughs> first one. It's like uh, bigger than a bigger than a cigarette. It's cigar. Cigar. Very good. Um, same name. Christy name was Branson, the Virgin guy. Richard. 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 And you know when your parents aren't married. Yes. Oh, sorry, Gary. <laughs> Divorced. Separated. Divorced. Yeah. <laughs> yes. no. And they have you. Bastard or something. Bastard. Bastard. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Van Gogh had. He's a painter. What was his first name? Vincent. Yeah, and the second is another word for nerd. An American word for a nerd. Geek. Very good. Geek. Now this is um, this is a Nigerian and a Dynamo Kiev player. Now it's another way of saying. Fortunately, I engaged the services of a lady of the night. <laughs> Fortunately, yeah. I employed the services. Lucky. 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 Lucky Hadda. Lucky, lucky, lucky Borta. No, Lucky. I had a. I, I, I had a. Ida. Ida. Lucky Ida. 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 Lucky Ida. Very good. This is. That was cool. Oh, it was enjoyable. Oh, I love it. So, Gary's team have 14 points, but this week's winner is David's team with 17. So our thanks to David, Jonathan and Alec, Gary, Rory and Clive. We're all off to watch Emil Heskey fall over against Greece. On My BBC name's Nick... One. Ha on BBC One. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. <laughs> Clive Anderson never wanted to be famous, he claims, after the event. If you're a Sky Ticket Hall viewer, press red now to probe the barrister. Next, Room 101 after this and these on us. Thank <laughs> you.